Hey guys, I'm in the STEM Outreach Centre at Kingston University and today we are doing a heart dissection. Alright, so here we have our heart. This is the right side, this is the left side. This is the coronary artery going down here. We open it up, we can see some vessels. You can see this quite large, wide one here, and this slightly thinner, old one here. Comes out on the right side. This must be the pulmonary artery going up to the lungs. We can see slightly thinner, whereas this one's got much thicker walls. And then here, you can see it's coming out down here on the left side. And this is the right side of the heart. You can see it's much smaller than the left side of the heart. This is very thick and very muscly. So the first incision we're going to make is down here. So kind of like in line with the coronary artery. These gentle strokes to go in. We are not in a rush with this. We don't have to hack this to death. What we want to do is to actually see what is going on inside. You can see here how thick this actually is. So if we open this up, we are now going into, remember this is the left, we're going into the left ventricle down here. And what you can see are these tendons. Just going to extend that up a bit. We've now got the left side of the heart totally opened up. What I want you to notice is the thickness of this muscle here. It takes up the majority of the space. It's because this muscle is going to be pumping from the left ventricle down here around to the rest of the body. And it's going to be pumping through this large blood vessel that we saw at the top. So if we just put that back together quickly, you can see that this one here, I put my finger down there, is going to come out in the left ventricle down the bottom here. Now these bits here, these are the tendons holding the valve in place. This is the valve here. You can see it's quite thin, but it's very, very strong. So if I just wiggle my finger around, the only place I'm holding the heart up is on that, is on that valve there. It's a very, very strong valve, even though it's very, very thin. And that is going to go up here, separating this chamber here from this chamber down here. Because this is the ventricle. So blood will flow this way down into the ventricle and then back up and out the aorta at the top round to the rest of the body. So I just cut the aorta there. So this is our ventricle the muscles, the aorta that I cut there, put that back together, you can see it's there at the top. And then I'm just going to cut the valve. And hopefully you can see the valve there providing nice unidirectional flow from the top chamber up here into the much larger bottom chamber down here. Right, so if you're doing a good dissection, you should be able to put it back together 
and not have completely hacked to pieces your heart. So now we've looked at the left side of the heart, we're going to have a look at the right side of the heart and we're going to make our incision again in line with the coronary artery. Um, now you can do this whichever way you want, just to make my life easier I'm just going to turn this upside down. And again, with the gentle strokes, we are not trying to hack this to death. Right, now in here, you can see that the wall of this ventricle is much, much thinner than the wall of this ventricle. If we compare that thickness, to that thickness, this is much, much thinner, this ventricle here, because the only place this ventricle is pumping blood to is to the lungs, and it will pump it, and that will be via this much thinner walled artery here. Much, much thinner over this side, but we've still got these valves in place for the unidirectional flow. So coming out of this one here, blood will go in through here, into this chamber, in through here, and you'll see it will come out through the smaller top chamber, past the unidirectional valve in there. You can see these tendons again, really, really thin but really, really strong. Even at A-level, the very first thing I want you to do whenever you see a picture of the heart is write down which is the left and which is the right-hand side. It is so easy to get confused and it will lose you marks if you label things wrong. So just write right and left on the appropriate sides. Deoxygenated blood moves into the heart via the vena cava, into the right atrium, through the valve and into the right ventricle. It is then pumped to the lungs where it will become oxygenated blood. It will pick up lots of lovely oxygen. The oxygenated blood drawn here in red will come back to the heart via the pulmonary vein, go into the left atrium where it will get moved down into the left ventricle and then will be pumped to the rest of the body via the aorta. Now remembering which part is which is vital with this so don't worry we are going to label everything. Starting with the vena cava, this is the bit, the thick vessel that brings deoxygenated blood to the heart from the rest of the body. The vena cava goes into the right atrium. This has thin elastic walls and blood collects here before it moves down through the right atrioventricular valve now this valve is tricuspid and all of the valves in the heart and elsewhere in the body ensure a unidirectional flow of blood. The blood will move into the right ventricle and the right ventricle is very thin walled. This is the part of the heart that pumps but it only needs to pump blood to the lungs which aren't very far away, so it doesn't need that much muscle. The deoxygenated blood then moves to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. Now the pulmonary artery is unique because it is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood. It becomes oxygenated and moves back to the heart via the pulmonary vein, the only vein to carry oxygenated blood. The oxygenated blood arrives in the heart into the left atrium, 
Moving down via the left atrioventricular valve, and this one is bicuspid. Into the left ventricle. The left ventricle has a much more thicker, musclier wall around it because it has to pump blood to the rest of the body via the aorta. It needs to work really hard to get the blood all the way down to your toes and back up again. When you are thinking about the path that the blood takes and checking you have labelled everything correctly, here is a little trick for you. V for vena cava, A, V, A, V, A, V. It will always go like this. It goes in through the vena cava to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, to the pulmonary artery, to the pulmonary vein, to the left atrium, to the left ventricle. If you have two of the same letters next to each other, somewhere you've made a mistake. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.